Welcome back. This should be video seven and the second in us setting up our drawing sheet for the Project Lead the Way Shed design in Revit. So in a previous video, we had effectively put in most of these views, although I'm not 100% sure all our views are going to be correct size yet. Uh, we're going to now put in at least the beginning of this wall section, and then we're going to start adding some details. All right, so here we go. Here we have the sheet as we last saw it. Again, uh, I kind of think that we might have to uh, do some resizing here. Uh, this is going to look like it might be a little tight for all the notes that we want to put on our detail. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm just going to do a quick resize of this right now. We're going to make this not a quarter, but three sixteenths. And we're going to, again, I'm just double clicking, double left clicking inside of the view window there, the viewport, and changing the scale, uh, and then deactivating the view. And again, I'm just going to maybe do a little, uh, little housekeeping here to make this look a little, a little tighter, or a little neater. Um, for uh, what we're looking to show. So maybe something like that, maybe that. Looks like we got a little bit more space over here, um, but we can certainly play with the spacing on those uh, in the future. So now we need to create a new view. And when I say we, it's really going to be Revit doing most of the work. But again, we need to think about what we want to do. So I'm going to move back to our first floor plan. Not the first floor plan sheet, but our first floor plan. And that was looking something like this. Okay. Um, and uh, our goal is to create a view where we see the slope of our roof. Um, that's important, which means we can't put our uh, section view. And this is a symbol for our section view. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. That section view symbol can't go through one of the short sides. It cannot because there is no slope roof there for a gable. So we need to pick the side of our shed that's going to be most likely one of the longer sides. Uh, and we probably want to try to pick a location that doesn't cut through a window, although we certainly can. Um, but <clears throat> we, we want to kind of have a nice view. And, and the way this symbol works is there's an arrow here that's telling us we're looking uh, up in this view or towards this, what looks to be a utility sink here. Uh, and then this line here is showing us where it's cutting through the wall. Uh, and then this kind of tail piece here, that's just showing us that the view is only going to really exist right here. All right. Uh, and so what we need to do is actually create that section symbol on our drawing. So I'm going to start by going, uh, to one of two locations, it's up to you. There is actually a section symbol right here at the top of our screen, um, kind of over here by these thick thin lines. And we had you, I heard you turn these off way early in our series. And if we turn those back on, you'll see how thick the lines get. And that could be hard to see some of those details in there. So we want to do, we, we do want to leave that off. And uh, right there is our section view, or we should be able to go to view. And there we have section as well. So your call, I'm going to use the view tab because we're going to maybe look at some more stuff in here uh, as we move on. But right there is section. So if I grab section, all I really need to do is decide where I'm going to start my section or my cut and where I'm going to end the cut. Think of it as like cutting through an apple. Um, <clears throat> usually I start on the outside of an object. Okay, and that's where it's going to put what they call the head of the section view symbol, and then I'm going to drag through the wall and left click to place. Now, that's there, and what happened in our project browser, this little piece wasn't here before, and it's now added, if we expand it, a view. So Revit has created a view for us, and we're not even going to look at it yet. Uh, the reason I don't want to look at it yet is I want to look at this view, and you can see when I select it, I've got some things I can control. Number one, I'm using the arrow keys here. I don't want that tail section going through that wall down there. Um, maybe I want to flip the direction of my symbol. That way I'll be looking out toward this wall rather than looking at this wall here. And then 
and I can certainly play with the location some more. Uh, I also have the ability to kind of control how deep. Okay, so think about it, like if I'm standing here and looking towards the wall with the double doors, how far do I want to see? Do I want to have blind? Do I want to have blinders on and effectively only see this far in? Do I want to see all the way to the wall? You have that control here. And I'm going to do something like that because I don't think I really want to see the information about the window. Uh, and now let's go and look at what Revit has created for us. And so I'm going to go and double click on the section view. And here we have a view. The first thing I want to do with the section view here is I want to turn the detail level to fine. We definitely, definitely want to see all the details in our uh, floors and our walls and everything. Uh, and maybe while we're here, we might want to do a little resizing. We can shorten things up. We can also make them wider depending upon what we're looking to do. Uh, and we also have our elevation markers, and, and I could certainly decide to shorten some things up right now uh, with the way things are set up. So you can see we've got a view here. It also has a scale. But before I do much more work, I want to go back to my first floor plan sheet, and I want to insert this view onto our page. Okay, And you notice that is very small. That's not really what we want. When we have a view like this, we want to see the details nice and fine. So we want to make this very large. While we're here, you'll notice that we have a section view symbol that's now visible in our south elevation. If you chose a wall to show here that you didn't cut through, you might not see this one. And depending upon the scale of your floor plan, you may or may not see one here in our floor plan view. And in fact, you notice it came in and it now says A1. So that's sheet A1, and that's the sheet that we're on. And then it's telling me view 5 on sheet A1, and this is view 5. Uh, I'm going to start by coming down and aligning this with the other two views here. And then I'm going to open it up and double-click inside of it, and I'm going to make it bigger. And... That might work. I might try to go a little bit larger. That might be too big. And let's just check real quick. I'm going to deactivate and I'm going to try to reposition. Uh, I, I think I'm going to try to roll with that. Uh, so let's go back and, and let's... Uh, nah, you know what? I, I, think, I think I like... I'm going to go back. I'm going to undo... Go back to that view. Um, yeah, I, I feel like the half inch. Oh, sorry, am I in that? Oh, yeah, I'm in that view. Yeah, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to try to make three quarter work. We'll do a little flip flop there. And nothing set in stone, but I do want to get this darn close before I start adding in all of these labels that you see here in the example. Once we start adding the labels, um, depending upon the version you're in, uh, you may be an unhappy person if you put all these labels in and then rescale it. Because if you rescale it afterwards, it might not um, adjust all the labels. And then you'll, you'd be an unhappy person. So we want to decide on the scale before we get too much farther. And I guess let's see if I can make myself happier. I think I, think I like that. I think my only concern is having room for all the labels. Let's see if I can get this to look nice. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to maybe crop that there. This one here I'm going to crop right there. Um, I am going to uncheck the crop region visibility. Here's one I haven't shown you yet. I don't want these symbols way out here. So first I'm going to drag them in. And then, you notice how there's this checkbox here? I'm going to uncheck that. And there's a checkbox over here. I'm going to check that side so I can flip the side of that elevation or that level symbol. And so that way, I'm going to have all this room over here to hopefully do all my labels. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. So I'm going to deactivate that view. And I'm going to move that label up. Oh, I, this might be my downfall. 
That might be my downfall. Let's see if I can get this view moved up a little bit. And maybe we'll bring that label back down. And that's pretty darn close. I think I'm going to go up a couple keystrokes and uh, come back down here. And let's reorient that again. And I guess I want to make that a little bit bigger. All right. I think I'm okay with that. So we're going to move forward. And this is going to be a little bit different than the example because uh, all my text is going to have to be on the right side um, based on my layout. Okay. So I might be able to send this over a little bit more to the left. Uh, that way I've got some more space over here to draw. So I've got my section view placed. Let's go ahead and do a save. Uh, and maybe the next thing let's talk about detail-wise is I don't want to see, I might want to see this section view symbol, but maybe in this view I don't. So let's talk about how to turn that off. So let's go to our south elevation, and we can see it's visible here as well. So if I come over to my properties, I might get lucky with annotation crop, but that didn't turn it off. So let's show you something new, and that's going to be in this visibility graphics. And I want to edit. We haven't done this yet. We're going to edit the visibility. Okay, and, and each view, each tab up across the top here, is individually controllable, all right? Uh, and here we have a number of tabs about different stuff. And right now, this should be an annotation, okay? This is an annotation, or at least it should be. Let's see if my, my, my train of thought is correct. And it is a section view. So if I scroll down, sections, if I uncheck sections here and I apply that, aha, it is gone, okay? So it is an annotation and Ladies and gentlemen, those watching, uh, depending upon what you're looking to do, um, some of these things can be very confusing as to what is, where is located. So um, that just comes with a little experience. And now that symbol is gone, and if we go back to our first floor, I'm sorry, our first floor plan sheet, you notice that symbol is gone here as well. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next. We have uh, this west view upon which we want a roof slope symbol. So uh, for me, it's west. For you, it might be something else. Let's go to that west view, and I want to annotate this. And so if I go back up to annotate, there's going to be some stuff in here. And for our purposes, for the roof slope, there is this spot slope. All right, so I'm going to select spot slope, and... We have a drop down here between an arrow and a triangle. Uh, we want to see, I, I'd like to use an, a triangle. So let's select that. And then we're going to come down to this view. And you can see uh, I have the ability to do it in either of the two sides. And you might want to put it on this side because it looks like it's in the right location. But I'm going to, I want it on this side of the view. I'm not sure why, just because. But once I left click once, I have the ability to toggle it up and down, and I want it outside the view. Uh, and now I should have an annotation for the roof slope. And if we go and check our first floor view, or I'm sorry, our west elevation, or at least my west elevation, in our sheet, there is our roof slope notation. Another thing that we might want more of is dimensions in this floor plan view, but we're not gonna worry too much about those. I'll show you a couple of those. I also want to place a north arrow. So for this, we're going to go to our first floor plan. Again, I find it easier to work in the views most of the time when I'm adding stuff. Uh, and here we have um, maybe some dimensions around the outside. So again, maybe you did a bunch of dimensions, um, but we will usually do a dimension between center of a door. Oh, and you know what? I shouldn't have used the line. I probably should have, I'm sorry, not a linear, probably should use an aligned dimension. See how that helps me pick the center of the door. And so if I start a dimension there, and then let's say I come down to the center of the wall here, uh, you see maybe right there it kind of locks that dimension into place. That's Revit trying to help me with spacing of dimensions, and you'll see it kind of does it there, does another one there. 
but I'm going to put it right there. And then I want to change its location so it's it's aligned with the other dimension. It looks nicer. And I'm going to do another one here. All right, so there's a dimension there. Another aligned dimension right there. And maybe I need to do an escape here and select that dimension and change that location. Uh, and I can do some dimensions around the outside. So you might want to try doing a couple of dimensions. We would normally have dimensions for the interior walls, the, the door location. We would have a lot of dimensions. But this is the first time that you uh, might be using Revit, and it might be the first technical drawing you're doing. So let's try to keep it relatively simple. And since I put some dimensions in, I'm going to do a control S there. Uh, but now we want to do an annotation, okay, uh, which is a north arrow. And that will be over here under symbol. Okay, so I'm on the annotate menu, and we go to symbol. And now we get an introduction onto the library that in theory should have come with Revit. Okay, so there's nothing here for a center, I'm sorry, a north arrow. But over here we have load family. And when you go to load family, it's going to bring up a window. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we have access to. And I believe in annotations, we have North Arrow 1 and North Arrow 2. I personally like North Arrow 1 because there's this big triangle, and that's kind of like the arrow pointing a particular direction. So I'm going to find that arrow and I'm going to open it. And what that does is it loads that, uh, let's call it a block, uh, into the file. And now I have access to place that wherever I want. And it looks to me that I had some room here with the uh, wall section symbol. And so I'm going to left click to place that north arrow right there. And I'm going to hit escape. Now, one thing that we have not really discussed is where is north? We notice that we've got a north elevation, okay? Uh, and that has the two windows on it. And when we're looking at our floor plan, if north is up, the north elevation is actually looking at this side of the house. So north in our drawing area is straight up. If you were working on a project where it wasn't straight up, I have the option to rotate that arrow so I can point whichever direction north might be. All right, so we'll just leave it when it comes in, whatever straight up is north, and that will align with your elevations. Let's go take a look at our sheet. So now we've got some dimensions in there. Notice how this is all automatically updated for us. We also have a north arrow on our plan view. The last thing we need to do is the notations on our wall section. And I think I'm going to save that for a separate video. Thanks for watching. One more to go, and we will wrap up um, notations on the wall section and probably also talk about filling in the title block. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.